guys, in today's video, I'm going to be building a cornhole setup made out of three quarter inch oak plywood. I bought everything already that I'm going to need as of right now, sitting right around $104 for full sheet of three quarter inch oak plywood from Home Depot. I have a four bolts, half inch, the washer and a nut, and I have some edge banding since I'm using the plywood. I also got the official regulation weight and size bean bags from Dick's, which cost $32. Also, I bought four 2x4s for the under bracing of the cornhole setup. As usual, I'm going to be showing you step by step of how I build cornhole setup. Now that I have all the wood cut for the top and the sides cut down to 24 inches, and these are cut down to three and a half inches, my next step is going to be putting on the edge banding on the top because this is upside down, so try to, to picture it. This is going to be the sides. The 2x4 is going to go directly behind here, so you won't see that. And the edge banding will go right along here and blend the wood in. So it'll look like it's a solid piece of wood instead of oak plywood. In case you don't know what oak veneer is, all it is is a real thin piece of oak with an adhesive on the back. And what you do is you actually use an iron and you place this on the edge of the plywood and you will actually iron this on. And once it dries, you'll come back and trim it off with a sharp knife or a veneer trimmer. It's really simple, and it makes your project look a whole lot nicer. <clears throat> now that you have your iron set up on the cotton setting, and it's already preheated, you can go ahead and apply this adhesive, the veneer. You want to leave a little bit of an overhang just to make it easier on you. Once you get it started, it becomes a whole lot easier. What I like to do is stretch it out. As for a little section, give it a little bit of heat just to hold it in place so you're not fighting it. And you can come back forward and work the front section and then just keep going back and forth. Make sure it gets adequate heat, no steam, and it will actually hold itself down. Make, you also want to make sure that it's aligned on the sides. Alright, so now that I have all the veneer on the top pieces of the plywood, next step to do is to cut out the hole in the top of the board. Now this measurement is going to be 12 inches over from each side, obviously we'll give you the center, and 9 inches down for the center of the hole. Now I'm going to be using my Jasper circle jig to cut the 6 inch hole, and I just did a real rough outline of a circle from a practice piece of the use. To prevent stripping or splitting of the wood, I'm going to use some blue painter's masking tape. Uh, it holds down the wood and keeps it from splitting. And then I could go and just cut the circle without having to worry about anything. Alright, so I just finished cutting the hole, now let's see how it actually came out. 
and you'll be able to see why I use the Jasper Circle Jig and why I also use the tape. Just with a small amount of sanding, as you can see I can pretty much get that with my finger. All these little loose pieces will just come right off and I'll look perfect. So what I've done after I've cut this hole is I actually used the veneer on the inside as well so that it wasn't bare plywood layers. I ended up having to use a heat gun with a little angled bit on it to actually apply the veneer because I couldn't get an iron in there with the curve. If you have something that will actually curve with it and apply heat, that will work great. But I just used an angled heat gun and it worked perfect. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to assemble the outside pieces of the oak plywood with the top main piece. After that, I will actually build the subframe inside with the 2x4s for my legs and everything. So that, that way, the exterior still holds that oak look, the wood look, but the inside still has the main bones of a cornhole set with the 2x4s and everything, you won't be seeing this nice wood on top and cheap $2 2x4s on the outside. For this I'm going to be using inch and a half brad nails to secure it. One thing that I did, which a lot of people will overlook or just choose not to do, is on the bottom, instead of having the plywood open end with all the different layers exposed, that even if I did finish it, could potentially not fully seal, be sitting on the ground, I actually put the veneer down here to help seal off the open end of the wood, and then this way when I actually finish it, I will have a good solid finish on here that will help resist if there's any water in the grass or water on the ground from absorbing up into the actual board itself. I've got the internal frame all mocked up with each piece just basically sitting in here. It's not screwed in. But what I'm doing right now is I am going to be working on the leg so I can figure out where I need to actually drill my hole over here to have the proper angle that I want for the legs. So what I've done was I've actually used so the easiest way I found to do the legs is once you have the side piece in mark a line an inch and a half in where the other 2x4 butts up to it roughly on the side like this that'll give you a reference point then I measure down three and a half inches down to a center line once I get that center line I do an inch and three quarters from each side to the in, to the middle to find an intersection point this will be my pivot point for the leg so I will pre-drill this main section and then I will add in the actual leg and use the pre-drilled section as a pilot hole and drill straight through both pieces at the same time ensuring that they are perfectly even with each other on the sides. In order to recess the bolt that I'm going to be using for the legs, I'm going to be using a 1 and 3 8 inch Forzner bit which will also help give me a pilot hole for drilling the rest of the bolt through. So what I've done to help me cut out the radius for the leg so that it'll open up without binding is I actually used 
the leftover cutout piece from the table and I drilled out my center half inch hole for the bolt to go through just so I have a clean center section and I measured out an inch and three quarters and drilled a hole large enough so I could stick a pencil in there. So when I stuck the bolt down into the leg I had a perfect radius to cut around it. So now I rough cut it out on the leg and I'm going to sand it down to the proper dimensions that I need. So after the frame is fully assembled and put back into place, what I did was I used a 1 8 inch drill bit and I pre-drilled about 10 holes going around the perimeter to not only hold the frame in, but also hold the side in in case it wants to, for some reason, come apart. What I'm using is 2 inch nails, which work perfectly to go through the 2x4 and then into the plywood, but not pop out the other side. Now just do that the rest of the way around and it'll be secured. Now that you have everything assembled, it's time to cut the angles on your legs so that the top of the cornhole board is 12 inches. Now the way that I do this, and it's the easiest for me, I had a piece of oak left over right here that I cut down to 11 and 1 quarter inch. And what that does is that gives me 12 inches at the top. But what I'm doing to verify that is I'm using a half inch piece of wood. You can use three quarters, but your measurement will be a little bit different. And I just line it up on a flat surface, use a tape measure and go from the top of the wood to the top of the cornhole board, which you can see is 12 inches. And then all I do is draw my line. Then I take it off. Now that the boards are completely built, the next thing that I need to do is wipe them down to get off all the residual dust from sanding before I can stain. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, as you can see on the blue shop towel, it's completely clean. But when I wipe the board down just a little bit, you can see all the residue. You can even see where my fingers were at. So what you want to do is you want to keep wiping it down until you don't get any of this sanding residue. So after using a lot of rags, probably about seven or eight on all the sides, bundled up into fours, I've got the board all cleaned off. Now it's time to do the stain. I'm using a Sherwin-Williams stain. It's a fruit wood mix that I have. I like this. It's real easy to apply. It doesn't give you any blotching or anything like that. So we're going to see how this goes out. So I just finished up staining both cornhole boards, top and bottom. The only part on the bottom I got was the edges that we veneered. I'm going to let this dry overnight and in the morning I'm going to hit it up with some wipe on poly. Probably two to three coats. Follow that up with full strength polyurethane, non-diluted. And then I have a decal I'm going to stick on just to give you guys a little teaser. I've got one blue decal and one red decal that's going to go on both boards to match the bean bags that are both red and blue. And since I was in the Marines, seems to be the best fit for these cornhole boards. 
even though they're a gift for my wife for her birthday. Thanks for watching part one of this video. Stay tuned for the second part where we finish staining the cornhole boards and add a few custom touches which makes setting up the cornhole and playing the game a lot easier. This video was helpful to you. Please hit the like button and leave a comment down below. Also, if you have any questions, leave it down below in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Please subscribe to my channel to view more upcoming projects. Thanks for watching.